If you are a Notion lover like myself, I can't wait to share today's video with you because we are going to dive into the brand new Notion calendar. I've been a Notion user for several years now. I'll include my other Notion tutorials linked in the description below. But one of my biggest struggles with Notion is that all of my project management and task management has been kept separate from my regular day-to-day -day calendar. I personally use Gmail and Google Workspace to manage all of my personal and business emails as well as personal and business calendars. And then because I'm a Mac user, I then integrate those calendars into the Mac calendar desktop app, which just makes it really easy to see what I've got going on on any given day or week. The new Notion calendar app is actually a completely separate app from your current Notion experience. So while I think a lot of people were expecting a two-way sync or a calendar integration directly within the Notion app, Notion has actually released an entirely new app dedicated to showing you all of your regular calendar items and then overlaying on top of that your Notion tasks, projects, clients, anything else that can have a date in Notion can be shown on this calendar. Personally, this works great for me because I already have a desktop calendar app that I'm using and this new Notion calendar can completely replace that. To make this happen, Notion actually purchased another calendar app called Cron and adapted it for their own usage, which I think worked out really well because Cron was already a great app and then layered with your Notion databases on top of it. It's going to be a game changer for creatives or other business owners or even just people who use Notion for personal use. As of right now, there's not a ton of information available on Notion Calendar and all of its features online. So I'm hoping this video can be a resource to you that you can refer back to if you have any questions or if you wanna see everything that Notion Calendar can do and everything that it can't do and who it's best for. You can always use both Notion and Notion Calendar in your browser, but I really love the experience of the desktop app just for ease of access. The first thing you're gonna notice is that it looks like pretty much any other calendar app out there. When you go to log in, it's going to ask for your Google or Gmail account. Right now, Notion Calendar only syncs with Google Calendar, but I think they'll be adding more calendar integrations in the near future. Right off the bat, you can see there's a monthly overview on the left-hand side to show you which week you're looking at. There is a list of all of your calendars here on the left-hand sidebar. Over on the right, we have a couple different options that I'll get into in just a second. And then you've got your typical week, month, or day long display right in the center of your screen. To create a new event on your calendar, you're just going to click and drag in any time slot here, fill in the information. You can set things like start time and end time, although this is already set for you based on where you placed your event on the calendar. You could change the date, you can change the time zone, you can decide whether it's an all day event or just an hour by hour event. You can set it to repeat, you can add any participants to it. You can also set up an integration with Zoom. This was really handy. I use Zoom for all of my meetings. So if I wanted to create an impromptu Zoom link for a meeting on my calendar, I could add it right here. I can set a location. I can set docs and links, which is where it starts to connect to Notion here. And I'll show you that in just a second. And then down here, I can choose which calendar this event lives under. Is it my personal calendar? Is it my work calendar? Do I want it set as busy or free? And do I want any reminders for this particular event? Say for this particular event, I wanted to add my team member. I could just go ahead and add her email under the participants list. Then say I wanted to go ahead and add a Zoom link to this meeting. There we go. I've already connected this to my Zoom account. So this is set up and ready to go. And then down here, let's say I wanted to add meeting notes for this particular event. I could click in here and connect an existing Notion page that already exists in a database, or I could go ahead and create a new Notion page. So for example, I could create a new Notion task inside of my team tasks database and call this follow up from meeting. It's gonna live in my team task database. We're gonna create this. I can then click on this Notion link and it is going to automatically bring up the task that I just created, which lives in my team tasks database. Then we'll click on send invite and we're all set. 
One thing I do hope they add in the future is right now, this page that I created from Notion Calendar that's linked to that event is only linked from inside of Notion Calendar. There's nothing on the Notion page that I've connected that links back to that particular event. So right now, this is all pretty basic calendar stuff with the addition of being able to link a Notion page to your calendar events, which is cool, but we're about to dive in to the real game-changing features that come with Notion Calendar. So this is a great example. This is actually my Notion templates that I have for sale and I've recently updated them all to work with Notion Calendar. If you look in the description of this video, you're gonna see an option to buy my simple to-do list template. And if you purchase that on the next page, you'll have the opportunity to upgrade to get my advanced Notion templates. And that's what we're gonna be looking at today. My advanced Notion templates come with a dashboard for all of your tasks, a dashboard for all of your content planning, a sample content plan in the form of a project, and then just a content template, task template, processes template, as well as a projects template. Here we have my tasks dashboard template. Inside of this, you're going to see a Kanban board, which shows you all of your tasks by the timeline that I've set to get them completed. You're gonna see an area for quick links over here, which could be great for linking to your brand guidelines, your social media channels, anything like that. We have tasks without a date, which I'll show you why this is important in just a minute. We have a project section, which shows you how far along your projects are, what percentage of the tasks you've completed for every project, recurring tasks, as well as recently completed in case you accidentally checked something off that you didn't mean to and you wanna go back and uncheck it so you can add it to your to-do list once again. Up here, you'll notice that while there's the Kanban view, there is also a calendar view. And this is not directly integrated with your Google Calendar. As I mentioned, your Notion calendar is completely separate from the Notion app itself, but there's some really neat ways that we can integrate the two. So you're gonna notice there's a brand new button here that is called Open in Calendar. This is what allows our Notion database to show up inside of Notion Calendar. So while we won't see any of our Google Calendar events inside of the Notion app, we can look at our Notion database items within Notion Calendar. By clicking this Open in Calendar button, we are telling Notion that this particular calendar view, we want to actually add it and overlay it on top of our regular Notion Calendar. Calendar. Once I've clicked that, you can see that the tasks template from that Notion view has now been added to Notion Calendar, but nothing's showing up here and I'll show you why. When I click back over to Notion, you can see that nothing has actually been added to the calendar for March. So the calendar is completely blank. Therefore, Notion Calendar isn't seeing anything either. That's why I created this tasks without a due date section. So that way I can see which tasks still need due dates and I'm able to just drag them from this section right right over to my calendar. Let's get some tasks on here. There we go. Now I've taken a bunch of these tasks and assigned them to dates. Now when I jump back into Notion Calendar, you can see that all of these tasks have been overlaid on top of my regular Google Calendar events that are synced with Notion. And the neat thing is we don't just have to stop with tasks. We can do this with our content calendar as well. This is my content dashboard template that's also included within the advanced templates that I mentioned earlier. And you can see this dashboard does have your weekly tasks. We don't wanna drag these onto our content calendar because we only wanna actually drag pieces of content onto our content calendar. But we can see we've got some content that needs review here. We have some content that still needs dates. And then we can see that there's some content that already lives on this calendar. I've created some test content here. We have a blog post about the wonderful world of dog breeds. We have a video that goes along with that blog post. And then we also have a social post that's going to help promote this blog post. None of this is showing in Notion Calendar because I haven't actually clicked this open in calendar button yet. You only have to click this button one time to create that initial sync between Notion and Notion Calendar. Then in the future, anytime I add new content to my content calendar, it's going to automatically show up within Notion Calendar. And when we hop back over to Notion Calendar, you can see that the content that I created is is now showing up right here on the days that I have it scheduled. If I click on the different items within Notion Calendar, I'm not actually able to edit any of the content directly within Notion Calendar, but it does give me an overview of the tasks and content that I have planned for each and every day. There's this handy little open in Notion button that will open this piece of content directly inside of Notion so I can make any edits or changes. I also personally love color coding my calendars. So if you want to, you can come down, click on the different databases that you are 
syncing to Notion calendar and choose a different color. So if I think this orange looks too close to the peachy color that I'm using for my personal calendar items, I can come in here and change it to yellow, for example. While you're somewhat limited to your color choices for your Notion database items showing up in Notion calendar, you can change your Google calendar colors but you actually have to do it inside of Google Calendar. So if you go to your Google Calendar and you change the colors there, it will show up as a custom color and you're able to select any color based on a hex code. That's how I was able to choose this peachy color for my personal events and this bright blue for my work events. Just for the fun of it, let's also add our projects database to our Notion Calendar as well. We'll click open in calendar. You can see it's already showing up at the bottom here. Let's change this color to blue. And then instead of changing the dates of projects that I already have inside of Notion, let's create a new Notion project directly from Notion Calendar. We'll start by creating a new event on this Monday here. Let's double click. We'll call this Galen's project. We're going to make sure we want it assigned to the projects template. And there we go. Now my project's in here. Let's take this. You can see we get that little cursor change. Let's drag it across. And now we have a project that's assigned to the entire week. Just by adding that project inside of Notion Calendar, we can now see this project showing up in Notion. So while your calendar events aren't syncing over to Notion, the changes you make to your databases in terms of adding new tasks, projects, clients, whatever it is, that does sync back and forth between Notion and Notion Calendar. One quick tip that I want you to keep in mind is anytime you click this open in calendar button, it is basing the content off of what is currently showing in this database view. So any filters that you have on a particular database view that you have synced to Notion Calendar are going to affect what content actually shows up in Notion Calendar. Next, I wanna share with you one of the things I'm most excited about when it comes to using Notion Calendar, and that is time blocking. I don't know about you, but I love looking at all my high level tasks for the week and then actually assigning them to dates and times on my calendar so I know when I'm gonna be working on which tasks. For example, on this Thursday morning after my workout class, maybe I wanna to go to a coffee shop and I know I'm gonna have lots of time to get some tasks done from my to-do list. So let's take some of these tasks that I have spread out across the week on my calendar and drag them to a particular time slot so I can see how much I plan on getting done on a particular day. We start by clicking and dragging the tasks and just dragging them from this top section, which is where your all day tasks go, to the actual time slots on my calendar. Maybe I think monthly reporting is gonna take me a little bit longer, so I give myself an hour for that one. Or maybe I know I want my blog post to go live on 9 a.m. at Tuesday, rather than just having it go live on Tuesday in general. We'll put the video to go live on Wednesday at 10 a.m the social post to go live at 12 p.m. We're not actually scheduling this content. We're just visualizing it so I know when I plan to have it all scheduled. And then let's call Joe on Friday. Now we have a high level overview of what project I'm working on this week. And then within the actual weekly view, we have all of the tasks and social posts and content assigned to specific time slots. Keep in mind, if you are using a scheduling tool like Calendly or in my case, HoneyBook, which is my all time favorite client management tool to basically allow clients to choose a time on your calendar based on your availability, these Notion database items that we added here are not going to block out your availability. So say I synced HoneyBook to my work calendar, it's going to see all my work related events that I have on my actual calendar, but it's not going to see any of these tasks, any of these social posts, or any of the projects. So theoretically, a client could still book me at 10 a.m. on Thursday if I had that availability set within my scheduling tool. Think of these database items overlaid on top of your calendar as more like a visual reminder of just what you have going on and what you plan on getting done that day. While I use Notion, for all of my project management, task management, content calendars, as well as just general admin for my business. It's basically my one-stop shop, my dashboard for everything going on in my business and my personal life. I use HoneyBook as my client management tool. And that's because as a service provider, HoneyBook allows me to send proposals, contracts, invoices, to collect payments, to get contracts signed, and to basically track my client all the way through from that inquiry to the offboarding process at the end of the project. If you wanna check out HoneyBook, you can grab it now for 50% off. I'll include a link in the description below this video. For those of you that don't have a third-party scheduling,
scheduling tool like HoneyBook, you can actually use Notion Calendar to create your own custom scheduling links. Say somebody sent me a quick email and asked for some times to meet this week, rather than replying with all of my availability, I can create a custom link directly in Notion that allows them to only book during certain times. To do that, I'm gonna click on share availability. Then I'm gonna come over to the calendar and select specific times that I have available. And as you can see over on the right here, it automatically creates this message along with this custom link that I can copy and paste into that email and send off to that recipient so they can click the link and choose only from the times that I've selected. This makes all of that back and forth over email pretty much non-existent and it's a super simple process. The one downside I would say, and this is the primary reason I use something like HoneyBook, is when I send this Notion scheduling link, it is pretty heavily branded with Notion, whereas my HoneyBook scheduling link is all my business. So if you don't mind having the Notion logo on your scheduling link, this could be a really great option for you. One more cool little feature that comes with Notion Calendar are the reminders in your menu bar. If you are a Mac user, this is so, so helpful. Basically you have the option to have this little menu bar that counts down the time until your next meeting and gives you a preview of all of the calendar events that you have coming soon. You're able to choose which calendars you want to get reminded about and another cool tip if you are a Mac user is by holding down the command key, you're able to click and drag these icons at the top of this menu bar here and reorder them. I was noticing that the default order wasn't really working for me, so I was able to hold down command and reorder them so I had all my icons exactly as I want them. Just to recap, here are a few things that I absolutely love about Notion Calendar. First, the ability to overlay all of my tasks, content calendar items, client projects, or projects in general on top of my existing calendar events. I love that I can create new tasks or database items from directly within inside of Notion Calendar. And I love that I can drag those items onto the calendar if I want to assign them a time. And then those date changes that I make inside of Notion Calendar are reflected on those database items back inside of Notion. I love that I can assign meeting notes or a page within Notion to any event on my calendar. And I love the little reminders in the top of my menu bar. Things that I would love to see in Notion Calendar moving forward include the ability to have the Notion database items showing on my calendar actually block out time on my existing calendars. And I only want the option to do this. Most of the time I probably don't want it to happen, but every once in a while it would be nice to set aside a period of time to work on a task and know that nobody can book time to meet with me during the time that I've set aside. In the future, I would like to see more support for other calendars like Microsoft or iCal. And I would really love to be able to edit basic properties for database items inside of Notion Calendar without having to open up those pages within Notion. I don't at all mind that it's two separate apps. I actually think it works really well because Notion Calendar just replaces iCal, which I was already using previously. And I love that I can see everything from Notion laid on top of that calendar. Remember, if you wanna get access to my Notion templates, I'm gonna include a link for you in the description below. You have to buy my simple to-do list template first, and then you can upgrade to get all of the advanced templates that I showed you today. If you enjoyed this video or you found it helpful, make sure to like and subscribe and leave any questions you have about Notion in the comments. I will use that as inspiration to create future videos for you going forward. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.